Apple have just released macOS Ventura. Let's go over the settings that you need to turn off before you do a display calibration because the system preferences has changed in this version. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Apple has been on a yearly release cycle for macOS and this year is no exception. We now have macOS 13 Ventura. This demo is done on Ventura version 13.0 Keep in mind, as Apple release dot updates throughout the years, there may be slight user interface changes. However, majority of information, the settings that you need to turn off before you do a display calibration will remain valid. Another thing to remember too is to turn on your display and leave it running for at least 15 to 20 minutes before you start the calibration process so that the backlight has the opportunity to properly warm up. This guide will cover both calibrating internal display and also external display link up to the system and this will cover both software and hardware calibrated display type. For this demo, I'll be using my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is the one with the built in liquid retina XDR display or Apple mini LED display that has reference mode. However, what I'm about to share with you will also cover other displays in Apple lineup as well that does not have reference mode. The external display link up to the system, this is BenQ SW271C. It is their 27 inch 4K hardware calibrated display. And yes, 4K display works just fine on Mac without any problem, despite what others may say. All right, let's jump right into the system preferences. And that's the first thing we're gonna notice a change is that it's no longer called system preferences, but rather system settings. The moment you call that dialog up, you're no longer faced with the rows and icon. It now looks like iOS or iPadOS. The main settings are going to be on the left hand side and as you click on them, you will have other sub settings that you can change on the right hand side of the screen. One thing I will say about this is certain logical locations for some of these settings are no longer retained from previous version of Mac OS. So this guide is definitely going to be really helpful. Let's start out with the display. So I'll click on that. And because I have two display link of the system, I can see the display that I am selecting with that little arrow pointing up that's in gray there and also the name of the computer that's highlighted in white. If I switch, you will see that the arrow is now pointing to the external BenQ SW271C. So let's start out with the Mac display. So right now I have this as the main display. If this is showing, for example, mirror, this is not going to work. So if you're trying to do a display calibration, double check and make sure this is not set to mirror display. For the resolution and everything else, I will keep it at default. Automatic adjust brightness, this is a setting you should turn off on all the machines, especially if you want color consistency. This way your laptop doesn't really change the brightness as you know your room gets brighter or darker. It retains the consistency that you set it at and that's what you want. The other thing you want to turn off before you do calibration is True Tone because True Tone will measure the ambient color temperature in the room and it's going to adjust not only just the built-in display, but also the external display as well. And most of the time when I see a calibration failure is because True Tone is left on in the system. Now you have the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro, you have a slight advantage because you have the different preset mode. So if you're planning to use your display in any type of professional capacity, I recommend that you go into a preset mode, which will automatically disable automatic adjust brightness as you see right there and it will automatically disable true tone in fact you don't even see that setting on the screen at the moment so if you're doing this in a pro capacity i recommend that i'll leave link to additional videos that i've gone over those in detail in the description below All right, once that is done, I will now look at the BenQ SW271C or any other display link up to the system. It can be set up as an extended display. This is going to work just fine without any problem. The resolution, you can choose the one that you're most comfortable with. It doesn't affect calibration at all. And as far as color profile, you don't have to pick anything specifically before you do calibration. If you haven't done the calibration yet, you're not going to see the profile name like I have here. What you're going to simply see is something as you're seeing right now, BenQ SW271C. You can leave it at that. And once you do the calibration, then 
The program, Palette Master Element, will automatically set this to the proper profile automatically. You can change the refresh rate on the display if it supports it, and this model does support variable or different refresh rate rather that you can choose from. You can get that from the list. The other thing you need to turn off is high dynamic range. If you don't, your display may look watch out and you will not be able to calibrate successfully on your system. So those are settings you need to turn off. Now, some of the other settings that I would tell you you need to go to and in previous version of Mac OS, I would tell you to go to battery, but when you go to battery now, you don't have the opportunity to really go in and change when your display would turn off and how long your computer would stay on, which is somewhat counterintuitive. The other thing is screensaver. I recommend disabling screensaver. However, if you click on screensaver right now, there are no settings to disable the screensaver and you don't know the time interval when the screensaver is gonna show up. Well. Apple have consolidated these option into a option called lock screen. And in lock screen, this is where you can change the settings. So start out with the start screensaver when inactive. I set this to never because I don't really use screensaver on my system. However, before you do a calibration, I recommend setting this for to never anyway. This way, if your calibration should take slightly longer, the screensaver doesn't come up in the middle of a calibration, forcing you to start over again. In addition to this, turn off display on battery when inactive. I also have this set to never. Should I lose power during calibration, I want the display to turn on. You can certainly come back and change this to a number that's comfortable to your preference later on as well. Turn off display on power adapter when inactive. I also set that to never. This way the display does not turn off or go black. And you can deal with the required password. I'm not worried about that. But this is what you would have to do in order to make sure the screensaver doesn't come on and also control the intervals when your screen may go black. This way it doesn't suddenly shut off in the middle of the calibration process. That's pretty much it. All the settings that you need to change in macOS Ventura before you start the calibration process. And because there's a lot of these changes, I hope that you find this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to renew. And remember, in our trust. In addition, on some displays, you may have a, I don't even know what I'm talking about right now.